how to deal with people who dominate the conversation. Uh, I have dealt with this so much in my work. I've learned some really clever techniques. I've made some stumbles, blunders, and failures. And in this video, I'm gonna show you three of my favorite methods for in the gentlest, most loving possible way, quieting people down who tend to dominate conversation to create space for all voices to be heard. This is really good if you have any interest in creating more psychologically safe and inclusive environments in your own educational leadership group context. I'm Chad Littlefield, let's get into it. A big part of my past work experience that led me to creating We and Me, these video tutorials, being invited to speak and facilitate workshops all around the country, was working with this group called World in Conversation, where my job was to uh, sit in over 500 dialogues and lead conversations with groups of six to 10 people on topics that were fairly contentious, race relations, long-term conflict, gender politics, etc. Very frequently, somebody would really dominate those conversations. And it might be, you know, it might not have bad intentions. They might just like really love to talk and they love to hear the sound of their own voice or they're really passionate about a particular topic and they're just constantly sharing, which is, it's not always bad, but it is bad when it suppresses other voices. To be a little bit vulnerable in this moment, like. I love to share, I love to talk. And so I'm recognizing that even as I'm recording this video, sometimes I am the monopolizer. And so I've learned through some deep empathy how to really re-guide and direct traffic toward all voices in a room, not just the monopolizer, not just the person who dominates a conversation. I'm gonna call my first strategy, flip the roles. This is so easy to do and it is so powerful. Um, all I do in a group, so let's say we're having a conversation, it could be virtual, it could be in person, and i noticing that somebody's really dominating the conversation. And I'm about to ask for people to participate or share, ask for people's perspective. All I'm gonna do is say, hey, this time when I ask you the question, what struck you about those conversations? Or what struck you about that last meeting? Or what do you think about this? When I'm about to do that, right before I ask that question, I say, if you typically are the first person to speak or the, one of the first three people to speak, hold off and be like the eighth person to speak. And it's possible that you might not get a chance to speak this time, but I'd love to hear some of the voices that don't always get heard. And so did you see what I did there? People who talk a lot know they talk a lot. And so I just said, flip the roles. I didn't say, we don't wanna hear from you. I said, we'd love to hear from you, but not in a way of like, hey, if you haven't spoken yet, like, hey, say, like Sandra and Mark and Jamal, I haven't heard from either of the three of you. Can you like figure this out and share something, right? No, I'm not putting them on the spot. I'm inviting loud people to be quieter by saying that I'd love to hear from other people. That simple flip the role is so powerful. Now related to that um, is a technique that uh, I would call creating space. And like space, like outer space, it's silent. And sometimes if you leave just a little bit of silence, it creates enough of a moment for someone who tends to be a little bit more hesitant to share to actually share. And so one of the ways that I create space is by saying, you know, and I, th I really think that the best way to avoid awkward silence is to create productive silence. And so one of the ways that I would create space with a group is just to say, hey, I'm gonna ask you a question. I'd love to get all of your responses. If you tend to be the first person to speak, hold off and maybe be the third, fourth, or fifth person to speak because I'd love to hear from everybody in the group. I'm gonna ask you this question, and then I would love to just pause in total silence for five seconds to wait for everybody to think of their own response before we popcorn out a handful of responses. And then I share, and that, in that five seconds, you've created enough space for the people that are a little bit more hesitant to say, okay, I think, I think this is what I wanna say, and they jump in, right? And even if no one shares in that five seconds, let that time sit. It is such a good exercise for monopolizers to just sit there and bear through silence. And also, if it gets really bad, I might reflect back to the monopolizers that they're like, well, there's so much silence, I just I had to jump in and say something. I might reflect back to them of like, it was actually only four seconds of quiet, and so let's do this one more time and let's just take 10 seconds of total silence and get everybody a proper chance to think. Not everybody gets ready to speak as quickly as some. The second technique that I'm gonna share with you is inviting you to change the mechanics. 
if there's somebody monopolizing a conversation or dominating a conversation, it might be because of them, but it also might be because of your structure. If you're meeting in a large group of 12 people, you're breaking Amazon's two pizza rule, which is never have more people at a meeting than, can, than two pizzas can feed. And so that structure would be lousy. If there's too many cooks in the kitchen, you're just asking for somebody to dominate and take over and asking for everybody else to just sit into the role of consumer. And so when I say change the mechanics, what I mean by that is split out into groups of three to have discussions and then come back and report out what you heard other people in your group say not what you said. Because um, when you re have people report out what other people said, the monopolizers don't go quite as crazy with other people's words as with their own. Whereas if you are in asking for their opinion, they'll give you that for days on days. Third technique here, and this, we're starting to get down to the wire. We're starting to get down to the place where like if the first two ideas or techniques didn't work, um, the second one is a little bit more of a direct approach. It's very effective. There's a, um, a really gentle, kind way to do it. And then there's a blunt way that is like kind of my last ditch, not last ditch effort. It's my strategic uh, way. And this is steering into the curve. So if you're not familiar with that metaphor, if you're, in a, if you're in a car and it's spinning out of control on icy roads or something around a curve, you wanna steer into the curve, which is very counterintuitive, right? You're actually going what feels like toward danger to get yourself realigned. And if that metaphor is not working for you, uh, pointing out the elephant in the room is this idea. And so just actually calling out the dynamic privately first. So this is the gentle loving way is to, if you notice somebody's like really dominating every conversation, to pull somebody aside and use technique number one in private one-on-one -on -one with the person dominating. And so actually look at them and say, hey, what I'd love for you to do, I'm loving all your contributions and I'm recognizing that your contributions are heavier than other people's and I wanna make space for other people's voices. And so can you aim to just like bear through a little bit of awkward silence to give space for other people to share um, for the rest of our day or for the rest of our session, et cetera. That could be done, if you have some trust and rapport with them, that could be done in direct message over Zoom. That could be done in a side conversation on a break. Um, you choose how to do that, but that private check-in, steering to the curve, and just pointing out the dynamic, because guess what? You're not gonna surprise them. It's like, um, I once worked, I did a, this whole team development program with a group of students who were blind, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, I, like I'm not blind, this is, this is so not normal, and I realized, like, they taught me, whoa, 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 this is totally normal for them. Like, me pointing out that they're blind or that they're visually impaired is not news to them. <laughs> so pointing out to somebody who's dominating a conversation that they're dominating a conversation isn't news to them, right? You're not, like, you're not gonna shock them. You're not gonna like make them enraged. They're not gonna spin off and go crazy because you shared that. And the second way to steer into the curve or point out the elephant in the room is to do that publicly in front of the group. And I'd be really mindful of this and I'll share an example of how I did this recently. That was a bit of a risk. So I was in a workshop and it was about 80% uh, women and four guys, all of them were white, and there were a handful of people of color on the call as well. I was noticing that me and Will, who were facilitating, my co-founder, uh, were talking a bunch, and then this one other person who was also a white guy was talking a bunch, and what came to me in, the, in that moment when he went to speak, and he was kind of dominating the conversation a little bit, not in a bad way, it was great contributions, but his voice was heavier, and I said, um, and he wouldn't mind me sharing this. His name's Jason. I, I just said, uh, hey Jason, quick pause. Um, I recognize we're playing white guy ping pong right now. I'd love to create some space to hear other voices in the group. After that conversation, I had multiple individuals message me and say, oh my gosh, I never heard a white guy call out other white guys for playing white guy ping pong like that. Um, that was so awesome. I felt so heard and seen and it allowed and created a space for my voice. And so that's an example of how I might publicly acknowledge that in also a really loving way though. If you love creating awesome conversations, you would love this book and all the tools that we have available for free digital download in the link below. I'm Chad Littlefield. Have an awesome day.